Fatima radiallahu anha, after the Prophet ﷺ died, immediately went sick, immediately became ill, right? It, it did not take but a few days for her to become ill as well. And you have to ask yourself, why did she love her father so much? Did the Prophet ﷺ spoil her with wealth and riches and throw things at her, use his position of power to privilege her? Or was it that intense love that the Prophet ﷺ showed to her? Right, that, that, that was something and that's a lesson for parents as well. The Prophet as a father, the Prophet as a parent. That what you give to your child of love is so much more than anything else you can give to them. How much did the Prophet ﷺ give her of himself, despite being the Messenger of Allah, despite having all that he had on his plate, that made her love him so much? So when did she die? It was the first Ramadan after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. Imagine Medina, first Ramadan after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. You know when you talk about anniversaries or things that come up or whatever it is after the death of a person that bring back all the pain? Ramadan in, the, in Medina and the Prophet ﷺ is alive, leading you in prayer. How, I mean, look at our masjid in Ramadan. How amazing was Ramadan with the Prophet ﷺ amongst the people? And this is the first time that they're going to have to go through Ramadan and the Prophet ﷺ is dead. He's buried. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, in the very first Ramadan, as that Ramadan came around, she, it was the third day of Ramadan that <clears throat> she goes out to her courtyard. So meaning right outside the home. She lays at the heavens smiling. She looks up at the skies and she's smiling. Now that to be Asma bint Umais, she called for Asma bint Umais, may Allah be pleased with her. And she told Asma bint Umais, she said, listen, when I die, I want to be buried at night so that not too many people come and no one will see my figure. And, you know, what she meant by that was that she wanted a very modest, a very modest parting. Right? And some of the scholars said she was, of course, known for her hayat, she was known for her modesty, and she literally meant it as that, I don't want my figure to be exposed, so bring a cloth that is wide, that will cover me, and let me be buried at night, so that very few people would attend, so that it wouldn't cause, it wouldn't have too many people around at that time, and Allah would conceal me. So, Asma uh, told Umm Salama, radiallahu anha, Umm Salama was one of those that furnished the house of Fatima, right, in Ali. May Allah be pleased with them. So Umm Salama brought her a cloth from Habasha, from Abyssinia, from the migration to Abyssinia. That was a very thick cloth, concealed her with it, and she was happy with it. She looked at that cloth, she said, this is good. And then she called for Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. All right, so her last moments are actually with her family, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And she called for Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and they shared some moments of, of love, and she, she actually told Ali radiallahu anhu that I want you, she actually told Ali who she wants him to marry after she dies, to take care of the kids. So she told Ali radiallahu anhu to marry Umama, who was the daughter of her, uh, of her sister, um, Zainab, so that she could be a caretaker for the kids. She said she's a, she's a motherly woman, she's a loving woman, so when, when I die, I want you to marry Umama because she would take care of the kids. She would take care of Al-Hassan, Hussein, Zainab, and Umm Kulthum. And that's just her thinking about her children. She embraces her family. And SubhanAllah, she leaves this world, laying out, looking at the heavens, and the angel coming to her and taking her with a nur on her face, with, with a smile on her face, with just complete peace, fulfilling what the Prophet ﷺ had said which is that she would be the first of the companions to die after the Prophet ﷺ. The very first person to leave this earth from the family of the Prophet ﷺ and from his close companions that would join the Messenger ﷺ after uh, his death. Ali radiallahu anhu just lost the Prophet ﷺ. And now he lost Fatima. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, assisted in the washing of her and he cried frequently at her washing. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu had to have the grueling experience of doing what the Prophet ﷺ did with Khadija, which was to actually get in the grave and receive her body and to bury her. 
And it was extremely difficult on Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to do so. And Ali actually led the janazah of his wife Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. And this is going back to the Prophet sallallahu burying Khadija. It, it, it feels very similar, right? I mean, that, that closeness, that tightness between these two. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he actually said, he said, nothing exhausted me more in my entire life than the death of my two beloved ones within that short period. I lost the two most important people to me in my life within that very short period. And Ali radiallahu anhu said, everything I've been through in life, battles, wars, khilafa, fitna, all of it. He said, nothing consumed me and took more from me than the death of the Prophet ﷺ and Fatima radiallahu anha in that very small you know, period of time. And this is, uh, this is how we, you end on a sad note because, but there's something to be, to be said about this, that when you read the poem that Ali radiallahu anhu recited at the graveside of Fatima, there's nothing happy about it. There's nothing about it that is hopeful. It's just pain. It's raw pain. When you read what Ali radiallahu anhu said at the graveside of Fatima radiallahu anha, but that shows you that love and that humanity and that rahmah. The Prophet said that's the mercy of the heart. That is mercy, right? Remember when his own son died and the Prophet was crying and they said, you know, how could you be crying? Well, Anta Ya Rasulullah, he said, it's, it's rahmah. This is the compassion that Allah puts in our hearts for one another. And so the, the words of Ali when Fatima died, pure pain. Un, I mean, unfiltered, raw pain. There's nothing else that's given except for pain. It's a very uh, strong poem. He had finished burying her. He stood by her graveside and he recited the following. He said, what is wrong with me standing at the graveside saying salam to the one who has passed? The grave of my lover, but she's not responding to my greeting. And he calls out and he says, my lover, why are you not responding to my salam? Have you forgotten all of the intimate? He said, have you forgotten all of the intimate moments that were shared between the two of us? And then he actually says in this poem, he starts to respond with what Fatima would be saying back to him. And he says, my beloved one responded and said, how can I respond to you? And I've become a prisoner. I've become now consumed by stones and by dirt. And he cried radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he responded again, he's still speaking. He says, the dirt has consumed my beauty. And that is why I have moved on. And I've been veiled from my family and my beloved ones. And so he said, and so she responded and she said, and so my salam back to you and to them, meaning to those that I've left behind, those intimate moments have now passed. These are painful words. They are raw expressions of death. There is nothing about them that is, we'll meet again in Jannah, nothing about them that I'm okay. It's pure pain and that is actually an expression of that love, that deep love that Ali radiallahu anhu had for Fatima radiallahu anha. Now, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not go back on his faith. He didn't become, you know, uh, resentful to Allah. He knows the way that this works. He knows the process of death and afterlife. But that doesn't mean that he didn't feel pain. And I, and I think that's actually something that's very important. When we lose our loved ones, we're not expected to not feel pain. Okay? That's not what sabr is. Sabr is not, patience is not to not feel pain and not feel love and not feel that distance when you lose your loved ones. Patience is to not say anything, not to say anything except that which is pleasing to Allah and to use that pain to do good for them. Right? Like the Prophet ﷺ did with Khadija radiallahu anha, visiting her friends, spending on her behalf, maintaining those relationships. That's what it is. And I think it's, it's only befitting that you go through that and you just see it's, it's just love and pain. And Ali is actually عنه, imagining a conversation between him and Fatima at that point. And that's the deep love that he had for her. Anha. Of course, what we know, what the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned of the gathering of the souls of the believers, we have no doubt being that they're both from those promised al-Jannah, that al-Hassan and al-Hussein are Sayyidah Shabab Ahl al-Jannah, the masters of the youth of the people of, of paradise, 
that they are gathered uh, again in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu and Arwah al uh, in the uh, in the realm of the righteous souls. We ask Allah to gather us with them and to allow us to be like them. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to put that love and that mercy in our hearts and to put that rida with Allah, that pleasure with Allah's decree in our hearts and to unite us with our families and to unite us with this blessed family in the highest level of Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma ameen.